Have you ever seen sausage made from a potato? Now you have. I'm guessing it's gonna become a thing and this is no ordinary sausage. You're gonna love it. So let me show you how I made it. So there's two main stars to this show and, and one of them is the potato. I'm just gonna be using some washed like fingerling potatoes. I'm gonna keep the skin on. You can take the skin off. You can peel the skin off and you can use probably just about any other potato that you like. I just wanted to use these cause, cause I had them. Now the second star of the show is bacon bits. If you've watched me for a while, you've seen me use textured soy protein. That's the same thing as that textured soy flour. It's the same exact thing. All bacon bits are, are just old school vegan bacon. And don't worry, I saw when I was editing this that that bottle is expired. I had no idea while I was making the sausage. So for the rest of this, we're gonna be using a food processor, but you can also use a blender or like a stand mixer, but that might be a little bit different. So we're gonna toss in the bacon bits into the food processor, and I'm just gonna blend those into kind of like smaller bits, um, bacon, bacon dust. Now, once we have our bacon dust, we're just gonna grab some fresh herbs. I'm just using cilantro and parsley that I have in little jars in the refrigerator. If you saw my short or reel about that, you know, let, let me know down below. Should I make more of those like that? So we're gonna start off with about a quarter cup of the fresh herbs. Now, I just went about half and half with the cilantro and parsley, but you can really, you could do whatever you like. Now, along with that, I'm gonna add a whole chopped shallot, and then we're gonna need about three or four cloves of garlic, just roughly chopped. Now, just a pinch of nutmeg, a little salt and pepper, and then realize you forgot to put the blade in, in the food processor. So once you got the blade in, go ahead and just pulse it up a few times so it's like evenly pulsed, and it kind of looks like this tabbouleh looking thing. Now, just chop up your potatoes, toss those in, and then actually turn it on just a low speed. You're gonna blend it until it's an even mix, kind of like this. It's still gonna be fairly chunky, though. Now, what's binding this all together is gluten flour. Now I know this kind of excludes a lot of people, but in this particular recipe, it's not 100% necessary. You can use any gluten-free flour replacement and, and it'll work. It's gonna be different though. So we just added one cup of gluten flour, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, and then a teaspoon of psyllium husk. That's gonna really help the mouth feel. Now for the color, I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of beetroot powder and a teaspoon of molasses. That's gonna also add to some of the meaty, kind of earthy flavors. And now we need about a teaspoon of dulse. Now dulse is like a seaweed that happens to have kind of like a pork taste. It's sold as like a salt replacement, but when you add a smoky flavor to it, which I forgot to add right here, it really brings out those pork flavors, but we'll add that smoke in a little bit, so don't worry. But at this point, I'm just going to kind of use the food processor to pulse this all together and to knead the gluten into a gluten dough ball. Now we're just gonna take that dough ball and then we're gonna knead it a little bit by hand, just to kind of like bring it together. Um, now you're gonna probably lose some of the spices and everything like that, but that's okay. Just just get them all up and, and just put it all into a bowl and then we're gonna cover it up and then let this rest for about 30 minutes or so, which is enough time for... Hey gang, let me tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. Thrive Market. So I live near a bunch of grocery stores, but none of the healthy ones are that close by. They're often of a drive or on the other side of town. And the busier Monica and I get, the less chances I have to drive across town to get quality food. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. Anybody that does organic grocery shopping would know that this would be an expensive cart, but not at Thrive Market. This cost me $50. Thrive Market can help you cut your grocery bill by 30%. You can shop for thousands of the best-selling organic foods and natural products below traditional retail prices. And if you do find better prices somewhere else, they'll match it. They have organic groceries, snacks, supplements, eco-friendly cleaning supplies, non-toxic beauty items, personal care items, organic kids products, frozen veg, and a lot more. You can filter the catalog of products by diet, lifestyle, product types, and your favorite brands. Some of the stuff like the dulse granules, that's hard to find. And like these fruit snacks and popcorn, they're gonna cost you a lot more somewhere else. So gang, click the link in my description box or head over to thrivemarket.com slash saustache to get 30% off your first order. And a free gift worth up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Thrive Market, thanks for sponsoring today's video and providing me with great food. And then after about 30 minutes, it looks about the same. So now at this point, we're just gonna knead it just a little bit, and then I'm just gonna form it into a uh, rectangle about the length of sausage. And then we're just gonna cut off sausage strips. We're gonna get about six of them, six quarter pound sausage logs out of this. So this step right here is completely up to you. I decided to add like a rice paper skin to these. I thought it would be good to have them in their own like casing. Now for these like type of links, you don't have to do that. You could just roll them up. They won't be smooth or pretty. You can wrap them in something like cellophane or parchment paper. And 
and steam them that way, but I decided to steam them in the rice paper, and that was probably a mistake, and you'll see why in a little bit. So wet your rice paper, toss on your potato log, form it into a little bit better of a sausage shape, and then I'm gonna brush it down with a little bit of oil. I'm using avocado oil. Use whatever oil you like, or skip that step. Don't yell at me about using oil. So once you have them all rolled up and fold in, they look like sausage, and they feel like sausage too. They, they seem pretty good. So all we're gonna do is just roll these all up, and then I'm gonna brush the outsides of these with a little bit of oil, and then we have a steamer going. Now, I only brushed the outside of the oil so they didn't stick together, but that didn't really matter because we're gonna steam these and we're gonna steam them for about two or three hours. Now, anytime I steam like this, I always just throw the lid on and then throw the temperature down to like low and it stays steaming for a fairly long time. I just make sure that I check on it. That way you're not using like a ton of energy while you're doing this. Now, after three hours, I mean, these look pretty crazy, I'll be honest. Um, so the one thing about seitan is they expand. And I knew that was going to happen, and I assumed that because the rice paper was steaming, that it would expand kind of with it. It gets a little gummy, and I figured it had enough give to kind of give. But it didn't. It gave and it exploded. Uh, so some of these are gonna end up with skins, some of them aren't. So at this point, I'm just gonna wrap them up and let them sit overnight. If you're in a hurry, you can use them in about three hours. Otherwise, you can let them sit up to three days. These look pretty good, they're pretty solid. They're actually very firm, which is exactly what I wanted out of these. So we're just gonna get a pan pretty hot with a little bit of olive oil or the oil of your choice or no oil at all before you yell at me. Toss these guys in and let them cook. I mean, and they're beautiful. This is what I get for waiting until like seven o'clock to start cooking in the sun is shining. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's that false sun. It's just perfect. Now, I cooked these long enough to get the rice paper casing crispy, but pretty much I cooked them until they looked like they were kind of like egg rolls, uh, but they still ended up looking like a pretty good sausage. And then I think they tasted pretty good too. Uh, Monica's not here, so it's just me. So let me tell you what they taste like. Mm, okay. Super good. I don't know if I would do, if I were to do it again, I don't think I would do the rice paper skim. It works well in other sausage situations, but not in this one. The steaming just ruins it. The texture, mm, it's meaty. That meatiness is there, that pool is there, but like there's still, there is a little bit of like the potato-ness to it. So it's super unique, but all in all, that's delicious. That'd be pretty fantastic on a bun. Oh man, I wish Monica was here. But you can play with the fresh herbs that are in here. You can use different herbs like dill, you can use basil, chives. So, you know, get kind of crazy with it. Everything else, this is good. Potato sausage, I do think it's gonna become a thing. I think you're gonna like it.